Take your seats. for Six Flags Magic Mountain, Michael Ostrom. Michael Ostrom, I'm the uh, entertainment events manager. I'm Mark Wing, uh, 13 years after the director. And I'm Scott Ramp, and I've been there all 30 years. Alright, let's get this started. So we wanted to go back and talk a little bit about the, the origins and the history of Fright Fest. And, uh, started way back in 1933, 1993, I shouldn't say way back, sorry, 1993. Um, but Scott, why don't you tell us a little bit about those first years when you, when you were around? Uh, we'll come back a little bit later to, show, to talk about how the makeup started, but essentially I've been doing this since 1993 when it first started and it was a very small event and it has grown exponentially as it's gone along and so have our techniques, so have our talents, so have our makeup artists. Look at baby Scott. There's some baby pictures of me in there, yeah. I was 12. <laughs> Scott, you want to tell us a little bit about the, the first iterations here of our... our this is actually our very first, first year, and this was our very first clown, and it was an actor by the name of Dave Baker, and he was Bluebell. 
and then there's a, the one on the bottom left with his eyes. He was a little iteration a couple years later, but that was our very first, uh, very first Gotham City back before it was DC Universe, and uh, Dave was our very first clown. And from that point on, we figured out that clowns work. <laughs> clowns are scary, so we that's become sort of uh, a thing for the Six Flags and a thing for me. So, hey. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. Um, obviously, Fry Fest also started. Um, as a little haunted house, um, if you're familiar with the parking lot, um, our overflow lot used to be a, an old house of sort, kind of reminiscent of what we did now with Whoopies. And so it started out there and grew the next year even bigger, and that's when it officially, uh, year started in 1993. So, yeah. Started from one house to many, many now. <laughs> many, many more. You can see here on, the, on this slide a lot of the uh, the progression and what we've done with with Scott and the screen team and character development. And uh, Mark, why don't you talk to us a little bit about your process with uh, creative uh, with with our costume design, character development, and we'll. Um, yeah, it all starts obviously with an idea. We also look at what's big and happening that year. Um, for some of the characters that you see in the concept wise, all of them have come to fruition. Um, we have our ringmaster, and it's not a boy anymore, she is a lady. Um, yeah. Yes, she's in the uh, class right now, actually. Obviously, our Leviathan, which we introduced last year um, to, with our Devil's Triangle area, located in the main gate area, and then Dead Zone obviously was a popular area when we announced that one. Um, and that's our cyberpunk themed area with uh, light up elements and all different types of fun things. And a lot of those light up elements and innovation also came from one of our makeup artists as well over the years. And uh, I think she's in here, Miss Antonina Henderson. So, yeah. We got a few makeup artists and part of our tech crew here. So, thank you to all you guys out there for playing. Yeah, like everything else, it starts with an idea. We go do a concept. Sometimes it's many ideas. Uh, one of the things that we take pride in with us, uh, Magic Mountain, is that we bring our creative team is actually made up of our cat, um, our cast members, our techs, our um, what's called makeup artists, um, and our costume uh, folks as well. Um, so we work as an amazing team. That is our creative team, and I'm proud to say that. And a lot of the ideas also come from them. We create some unique, entertaining um, creatures and. Attractions. So, yeah. You guys all work together on the past. Yeah, we also get to work with some amazing companies. So, a shout out to all of the companies, including Little Spider Creations, My Go To, um, let's call it, a, um, oh my gosh, there's just been so many over the years um, that we're excited to work with. And thank you guys for being a part of it in our history. So, thank you guys. So Scott, let's uh, let's move back over to the makeup side, and I want to talk about some of the progression that that you've led here at the park, and uh, and some of the, your design technique and what inspires you and that kind of thing. The makeup the makeup is the one thing that makes Six Flags uh, different from a lot of the other events because we I make prosthetics. That's what I do for a living. I make prosthetics. So all of our characters, a very large percentage of our characters, especially all of our walk-around characters, are in prosthetics. They're not in masks, uh, they're not in ordinary makeups. And that little thing right there makes a world of difference. And I've also prided myself in the fact that as we've gotten further along, all of the makeup artists that I've, we've been able to bring in, we've become such a good team that people come up with different ideas, we share ideas, we, you know, I've taught this for 30, 30 something years. Um, I'm, I'm also like, really, I'm really proud to say that some of my makeup artists over the years that have come and gone with us, uh, one of the girls that first started with me as a student of mine, she wasn't even a makeup artist, and I trained her, uh, she went on and won an Oscar for Best Makeup, and we've had several people that have won Emmys, uh, one of them even on the bottom right there, Mo, um, we had several people that are Emmy winners, so um, if you work with us up at Six Flags, we're sort of Oscar and Emmy winning training crowd. <laughs> yeah, not, not bad, not bad. Um, and it's a lot of fun, and it's, it's really, the, it's a combination, like Mark said, it's a combination of the designers and the, 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 the operations people and the talent, and sometimes the, the talent come up with an idea and the artist works with it, and before you know it, we, like, 
well, one of our people in here tonight, Haiti, uh, she's, she's in a different outfit tonight, but one of our still ladies, uh, came up with her own wonderful character, and this year there's gonna, she's gonna have a twin. So that's going to be even better. So we have all, and just we have, we have a great bunch of people. We started out very, uh, you know, way back when, 30 years ago, with, with uh, still with using prosthetics, but using hands and fingers and rubber mask grease and sponges and messy, misty, messy stuff um, in little trailers outside and all that kind of stuff. And it's as it's gone on, uh, we've gotten better and we've gotten airbrush stations and our makeup area was designed for us actually with all of our electric and and uh, airbrush compressors and everything else we've we've done some that we've come a long way from this most of these are from like 93 94. so you came a long way from using uh, the ketchup bottle there huh? <laughs> yeah yeah we used to put we used to put blood in ketchup bottles because it was easy to uh, the fake blood obviously <laughs> and we, we even back then had a, a yellow bottles for the mustard that we made a little kind of Pus. <laughs> so, yeah. It was a bad day in the break room when you guys confused those things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My hamburger tastes weird. <laughs> so now we're moving forward a little bit. You can start to see some of our more recent characters. And what, what um, Scott started to allude there, too, is um, we, we really pride ourselves on, on allowing our are, and collaborating with our talent to create their own personas and really em embody these characters that they want to. And I know there's a few of you out there right now, I think. But working hand in hand with these people to develop these iconic characters has been a real recipe for success for us. So we're, we're happy to, to give the opportunity to, uh, for, for up and coming people who want to get into acting or who just want to get into the, the horror industry to. Um, you know, really cut their teeth in it and learn and learn something new and, and work their improvis improvisational skills and all that kind of stuff. It's very true. Um, like I said, I've been doing this for now 13 years and I've seen little kids when they're, I want to come work for you many years ago and they're now working for us as adults. Uh, we have families. Uh, we had a, a great family called Lackaboos um, who were amazing uh, walk around to uh, it's a big family um, at the park. I, park. I've been doing it so long that I've seen people come through that now I'm meeting their children and their children are working and it, gets, it gets pretty bad when they're it's like, you did my grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Mark were some of those. I know, that's the other thing. I think Mike said that when he first came to Fright Fest, he was like the little kid, you want to be a slider? And I'm like, I feel old. <laughs> yeah, no more sliding for me. <laughs> now we, we have a wonderful time with the, working with the talent and really putting it together. I mean, it's a it's a it's a process. Any of you that's ever seen how we do it, it is crazy back there. If anybody ends up with our VIP tours or something like that, we'll take you backstage and show you how all that stuff is done. But it's it's pretty insane. There's, I think we have a whole bunch of YouTube videos up probably too. I think. No, there's at least three of them out there. Definitely some really good ones from some of our original cast members and stuff like that, and our innovations over the years, uh, which I'm very proud of that we've innovated. Like as an example, our nightmares area, which we just celebrated our 10th anniversary last year. Woo! Um, a lot of people don't know this, but um, obviously nightmares is the very first chroma depth 3D scare zone. Not a maze, but a scare zone. Um, so, it's, uh, it took some challenging when we started developing it and testing it, and we were in tents for a lot of black lights. A lot of black lights. It was a reality check, to be honest with you. Um, but over the years, it started from its like lime greeny color um, to now really detailed, amazing stuff that our makeup artists produce. And we have a whole black light room dedicated in our makeup room um, just for these locations because it's such a popular effect. Couple more iconic characters that you guys have developed. Yes, I think people will notice it. And all of those, all of those performers in there came up with their own creative stuff. Worked with, worked with us. Talked to Mark. Yes. Had an idea. Passed it by him. Passed it by me. We, we came up with all these things together. So all of these people. This is this is I, I like to say That's this what makes us so special. Yeah, this we don't is just their like hire and character. Say okay, we throw this on you. No, we actually do a lot of creative development. Um, example, uh, Lorraine Lorraine. She's <laughs> 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 on our boot 
planner today, um, but it, it started as a little haggard orange dress, yeah. bob cut Mitch to the fabulous thing she is now. So, and so if you see her at the booth, color, if you see her at the booth today, she looks more like a typical witch. But when she's yes, in nightmares, actually, she's glow in the dark. Exactly, and uh, Giovanni, um, an amazing new artist that just started a couple years ago with us, he developed. He's, he's doing her makeup for this weekend. And the detail, I'm telling you, the detail flows. It's our movie quality. I'm super, super, super proud of the artists that I have working with. Yes. Really, I am. All right, so now we're going to start getting into a little bit more uh, of our present day. Um, so I'm happy to announce that this year we have the most nights of Fright Fest ever. 30 nights of Fright starting September 8th. All the way to October 31st. So we'll be open some Thursdays starting the end of September this year, and, and, and we'll, we'll love to see you guys out there. More times for you to come visit us. All right, so we're going to jump back to again the present. So we've got some returning haunted houses this year Vault 666, Willoughby's Resurrected, Sewer of Souls, Aftermath 2, and Truth or Dare. And do you mind? Now, yeah. yeah. So a lot of you, um, we've heard your thoughts, we paid attention, and this year, uh, Truth or Dare is becoming a whole new concept. Um, and it's thanks to our amazing technical team, our super advisory team that are also here. Um, special shout out to Trevor, I know you're in here. Um, <laughs> but um, it is getting a whole new enhancement, um, and we're super excited to share with you. We're not going to go into detail because we want to surprise you, obviously. But it has a new, a whole new villain and some really cool stuff happening inside. We're excited about it. Also returning this year are six, seven, excuse me, of our uh, world famous scare zones here. We've got Devil's Triangle, Territory Twisted, Card of Hell, The Dead Zone, City Under Siege, Nightmares, of course, and Exile Hill. So we can all visit Innocence back up on Exile Hill, which was creepy all around, which knows me. She might be playing with Oliver in the back. And then just a quick little note too, um, obviously it's our 30th anniversary, it's our big birthday, so there's some characters and stuff that we're going to pay a little homage to as well, which we'll get into um, shortly. Alright, I think this is probably the part you guys are the most excited for, would I, would I be correct in assuming that? Uh, Alright, so here we're going to let you know what's new for 2023. Brand new icon character, Nightmare. So, that's just a rough skull. Yeah. That's just a rough skull. That's a, that's a rough skull, but it's an amazing rough skull, let me tell you. Um, obviously, yeah, I did the concept of Nightmare. Um, he's our new big baddie. He is the father of all monsters. And uh, you guys want to meet him? Yeah. yeah. Uh, father of all monsters, come on out. This is his first time. on this guy. What do you see in the light? Light him up. Anything else like? Light. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this is right here. Uh, he's going to be joining us for our 30th anniversary. And with that, uh, we'll go over some new, uh, obviously some fun stuff. We will have a couple of new minions with him as well. Um, and uh, yeah, you will be a part of an, can I say it? Is it a 24 say? An all new Unleashed. Um, our opening of the day, and shortly in a couple of slides, you'll see the reason why we're doing an all new Unleashed. And introducing this guy as the father of all monsters. All right, it's some amazing work by Scott in the process of design. Yes. Uh, and a shout out to our amazing costume team, Kim and her team. Cool. Amazing, thank you, thank you. All right, we're moving forward. I'm happy to announce yeah. back by popular demand. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
like a Sigma Phi Moo Moo party? Yeah. Like, like, my kind of party? You like your kind of party? A house right party at Kadeo? Oh! That's it? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Did you really reach it yet? You better! You get started. Oh. Alright, I know you already have. But... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Margo Rita, our Springboard Street. So, in addition to not only condemned house party returning this year, we're super excited to also announce the return of Screen Break in 2024. Thank you for coming out. We really do appreciate it, guys. Thank you. We can't tell you how much we appreciate the feedback we got from you during that event. Um, it's really one of the most special things I've ever been a part of professionally. Um, just seeing the way you guys uh, enjoyed that event, embraced it, came out and supported all the new characters and all the new concepts. It was fantastic and honestly the most fun I've ever had. So I cannot wait to get back out there and do that again next year. All right. Moving forward. We spoke a little bit about this already, so we kind of hinted at that one, but Truth or Dare is returning with an all-new expanded storyline and some new uh, scenic pieces and things like that, just an enhancement to that maze. And Mark, this is yours. An all-new city under siege. <laughs> we're so excited and we're so happy we're working with a great company right now. Um, and we're redeveloping. It's going to be one of our most innovative um, areas we've ever done with uh, the most innovative theatrical lighting and programming with our amazing lighting designer, Zach Moore. Um, uh, Moore um, and um, it's something a little special to Scott and I. Um, as you will see, um, some of the, this is a rough concept to be honest with you, um, but we're going to pay homage to our clowns and our history of Gotham and City. We're working with team of artists to create some very cool stylized homage murals um, to the art um, to these amazing artists actually these actors who have developed Fright Fest over the years and so heckles and twitch Woo! Woo! Yeah! we're going to be on a bus uh, because that's uh, yeah it's the only place for you guys to be on come on now and it's going to look amazing in there we're taking a lot of the vehicles and stuff that we currently have and turning them into cloud mobiles of sort yeah. with weapons of mass destruction and all that fun Woo! stuff. A lot of theatrical, like I said, theatrical lighting, an all-new soundtrack um, for the area. Um, and it's going to be bigger and better than ever. And can I announce the other part of this? Do I'm going to my boss for permission. <laughs> and we're, we said we're announcing everything, right? right? Yeah, we're announcing it all. Ladies and gentlemen, Sliders of the Night are returning this year. City Under Siege has always been one of the one of the favorite places to go in, in um, at Six Plays. And if, if you if you know our area and you don't like clowns, come. That's that's the place to be. And with the slider show, it's going to be wonderful. Yeah, we're super excited to bring these things forward. So we also want to talk a little bit about expansion of Kids Boo Fest this year. Um, a new festival that we announced last year. We've got uh, some new items coming into the Whistle Stop Train, um, which will have a, a new theme and overlay there. Um, and Mark, do you want to talk about our friend there? Say hello to our very first Fright Fest fluffy character, Willoughby the Fat. <laughs> Be very fluffy and very, very cute. Very huggable. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to uh, move forward to, uh, to another portion of the, of the presentation for just a moment here. Um, if you stop by our booth uh, during, the, during the weekend at all, we, we had a raffle out there, raffling out some tickets, exclusive merchandise, a whole package there. So we're going to take a quick moment and do that real fast. Scott Ramp right here is going to do the honors for us. I'll get this, uh, grab this box real quick. Well, that's what that is. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so. All right, so if you have your ticket uh, from there, be ready for just a second. Uh, don't cheat, all right? Don't pick your own again. <laughs> I do not see. I can't. First of all, I can't see anything. Okay. okay. Numbers, too, under your thumb there. Num numbers under my thumb. Do I read it? Yeah. Zero, zero, three, one, zero, two. Anybody? 
Anybody? We told everybody how to be here. <laughs> Alright, we'll try one more time. Again, don't. Don't make any of Right here. Uh, oh, we got it. 102? 102? 102? No. Nope. Yeah. 102, that's right. Yes. He's, he's saying that's right. Read the first yeah, one. That's okay. Go back. Go back one. Zero, zero, three, one, zero, two. Yeah. One, zero, two. Yeah. Sorry, team. You're the person who was second. I didn't read it. You got the answer. That's the winner. All right. So what do they win? So they win a... So what they win? They, they get four tickets to the park. Uh, for them and their friends to come visit us during Fright Fest and Boom Fest. They also get some uh, exclusive Fright Fest merchandise from the line passes and parking. So, congratulations. <laughs> All right, so we actually, before we move forward, want to kind of take a couple minutes and just uh, reach out to you guys and see, um, you know, if you guys have any questions for our creative team here, uh, anything about past Fright Fest experiences or anything like that. Um, so yeah, if anyone's got any questions or anything, I believe we have some mics. Maybe Alex is around somewhere. Also, I see people standing up. You're not going to want to leave. We are not done with the presentation after this. Um, so we, so we, we have a, we have a uh, white vat here in the front that's going to help us out. We um, we'll take uh, take a couple people. Yeah, perfect. Here we go. We definitely can't see. So one thing I have to say is that you guys have always been super responsive to guests and listening to feedback, and that's not often the case in a lot of places. So a huge uh, applause for you guys for actually listening to the guests. My question is, is that when you guys do hear, you know, the constructive criticism, well, I hope it would be constructive criticism, uh, when they do come in, how do you approach wanting to either change, fix, or adjust what you've done in order to um, meet guest expectations? We take that very, very seriously, and I can't tell you guys that enough. Um, all of your comments are never unheard. Um, as a prime example, Truth or Dare was one of them um, this past year. And um, yeah, we immediately, immediately, what was a week after Holiday in the Park, we started developing and talking about, like, okay, we need to make changes on this. We do it for everything, to be honest with you. Um, like Nightmares, as it's evolved over the years, it's because also there's des been guest comments about, well, why can you have this character and stuff like that? So we've always transitioned our characters. We kept our icons, yes. But there's been princesses, um, there's been other like fantasy characters as an example of nightmares, but we have a core group of individuals that have been there for a very long time now that the guests love. Um, and like I said, we never, never just rest on anything. Um, we we are always inspired by our fellow um, community, our uh, other parks, and we, like I said, we take it very seriously and we listen to you guys. And if we're in the park, we're Mike and I especially. Don't ever be afraid to come up to us and talk to us and ask us questions. We're always open to you guys um, and listening to you guys. And that's something we really do take to heart because we really do care of our product and what we present to, to you guys every year. There's really nothing, I, I just to reiterate, nothing I love more than talking with you guys about our event and seeing your passion for what we do is the most fun part of our job. And, and from constructive criticisms to also compliments that, that lead our, our, uh, uh, you know, our creative direction. If we hadn't got the response necessarily from you guys about Scream Break and about Condemned House Party, we may not have been doing that exactly. this year. But it was such a hit. And at the moment, the moment the first couple of groups started coming out of, of House Party during Scream Break and coming up to me, I was standing at the exit and explaining how, um, how much they loved it. I turned to Mark and I said, oh God, Mark, we created a problem. <laughs> and I was like, we can't take this away. There's no, no way. No, but especially like, uh, yeah, we definitely saw those comments. We read all of your comments. We see all of your videos. Um, and that was like, oh, this is a reality check. We need to bring this back. <laughs> Don't ever say sorry. We love it. We love it. We are, yeah, we are YouTube uh, and podcast junkies on the creative team here. So we love hearing what you all have to say. We're all fine. We're all following everything that's going on. And like, uh, like with House Party 2, guys, this is our 30th anniversary. This whole event is going to be a party. Yeah. 
So we're really excited for that. Yeah. Don't assume it's, yeah, we're gonna be scary. We're gonna do our thing, but it's gonna be a party as well because we want you to have fun. So that's the whole point of it. We're celebrating a birthday party. Oh yeah, yeah, like Scott's saying very secretively. <laughs> we have a lot of new talent this year, and there's a lot of new innovation, there's a lot of new, even with our technical team um, and our uh, wardrobe team as well, there's a lot of new minds bringing, coming into this now, and we're super excited. We always love uh, fresh blood, so. <laughs> uh, any, uh, any other uh, questions? We got right over here. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing good. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little hard to talk in this. No problem. Um, my question is, is Final Scare coming back or are you bringing back Thriller? Uh, <laughs> yeah, we only have two options, huh? Thriller! <laughs> what what, what Final am I still? Final Scare. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you guys right now. Final Scare! Final Scare! That's our walk around, just so you know it's our scare. <laughs> That's a biased crowd. <laughs> Um, you know what? Y'all are gonna have to come and see it. Um, we gotta, we gotta hold some things back too, just a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah, you need to come to an, an audition as well, and yeah, get hired. We have one on August fifth, you guys, at the park. So if you're looking, we are casting still. Spots, few spots left for those good ones. I'm letting you know right now. We can say too, as part of the new city under siege, there is a um, a stage returning to that area, like we had during screen break. So we'll have some opportunity to do some new entertainment and for Fright Fest on that area as well. So, right. uh, any anybody else? Ooh, ooh, I got. Oh, we got right over here. I'm not going to ask you the next topic. All right. So I got a quick question, Scott. You are, I would say, like the preeminent like makeup artist of theme parks yeah, in right. Southern California. <laughs> After all of these years, how do you keep it fresh? How do you keep your passion going for these haunts and for these characters? That's a great question. Um, I've been doing this a long time. Obviously, I love Halloween. I can't show you what Halloween tattoos I have, but I do have some. Um, and uh, I just, I, every year, I, I sometimes I think I'm going to burn out, because I'm not the 12-year-old that you saw in the picture anymore. Um, but I get back up here, and I see my artists, and I see Mark and, and Mike, and what they kind of come to do. And essentially, the thing that gets me going is I literally walk out in the park, I'm, I won't lie, I'm exhausted by November. I'm exhausted. The joke is I get grayer every November. But I, I don't, I'm never going to quit this kind of thing. I love this. And what makes it is coming out and watching the reactions with the guests. All I need is one good scare. I can have a crappy day. I can be super tired. I walk out and see one person just ah! freak out and run, or, or the one I call the, the I, I, I don't know what anybody else calls it, I call it ball bearing feet, because it looks like somebody just, you know when you get a good scare, and their feet just go boom, boom, boom. I just, I, I, I'll see a couple of those and go, okay, I can do this, okay. Yeah. But, I've been, but I've been doing this for just forever and ever and ever, and I love it, and I love sharing with other, other people and other, you know, even with other parks and and talking about haunts and seeing what's what, and if people come up to me with an idea that, you know, is something I hadn't thought of, I'm all like, ooh, okay. So please feel free to bombard me with that. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I forgot to mention that the raffle winner also gets to see your, your Halloween tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> Most of them. Good, good win for you over there. All right, we'll take, a, take one more right over here. Last one, I think, right here. Okay, so we've got two more. We'll line up these two then, but we'll go you and then you right over there. Perfect. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Um, hi there. Uh, I really enjoy, I think, part of what makes Fred Fest so special at Magic Mountain is the whole Voodoo Nights um, uh, show aspect of it. Um, and specifically, the, the atmosphere um, elements of the park, I think, are just so like, strongly developed. What, what goes into consideration when it comes to like, you guys are going to build a new facade or a new scare zone? I'm thinking like specifically about when you guys were building Dead Zone for when the whole underground West Coast Racers area 
was being built, like what are the considerations for what is like fright fest, what is uh, atmospherically kind of like what you think is like that is one that is a really good question. question. Yeah. Uh, I'll let Mark chime in here, but okay. I think <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. Any hard ones like that, if you have a hard question over there, it's going straight to Mark and stuff. <laughs> Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll add to that a little bit. I think that, you know, it's constantly evolving. We're always trying to do something new, but we're, we're not afraid to try things in general. So, so we, you know, we push, we push boundaries, we go to the edge, we do whatever kind of things that maybe other parks wouldn't do. Dead Zone was kind of a, kind of a stretch. It's a good example because we, we went out and we, we, we went with the cyberpunk theme, which we, which we hadn't seen before. We started adding, to Scott's, I'm sure, pleasure, adding lighting and things to the makeup <laughs> that we were doing and, and special, um, you know, little effects on the talent themselves. But really, we're just trying to do something new each year and try to try to do so. We, us and our tech team, our makeup artists, like we said, we're just such a collaborative uh, a department that comes up with all these things, and and it's always just trying to not rest on something we've done before and do something you know that that that's going to excite you guys. No, it's it's really with our history as well, not just as Fright Fest, but a theme park. Um, over the years, as a lot of you know, we've started. We have first of its kind. Or the tallest and largest and fastest. Um, it's part of that innovation. Innovation is a key factor with what we do. Um, and Dead Zone at the time, there was the, the video game that was really, Dead Zone was actually slated to come out in 2020. Obviously we had a situation in 2020. Um, so 2021 we redeveloped and brought it back and made it even bigger and better. And obviously it's also just not um, the over, like, like the big expenditures, the animatronics and all that fun stuff. It's stuff that we do with the makeups, the costumes. Shout out to Michelle Lynn, amazing costumer, and she did, a, she did all the designing for that sound for the costumes. And a lot of the stuff you see for the But um, the big thing um, is it's within the area. It's what we do with foggers. We all, we're always, our techs are always playing with how we can change things and make it even better and to suit what our theme is for the year. So innovation has always been a key factor with not just Fright Fest, but with Six Flags Magic Mountain as our, as our history. That also goes with the question that the guy, other guy answered about Mike and how do I keep him busy, is because when, you know, having done this now for 30 years, six, this didn't, Fright Fest didn't start out as big as it is. It's, it's grown, sometimes a little exponentially, but it's grown so much and most of the way, reason it's grown is because of the things that the, the public has said. They wanted to stay open longer. They wanted more events. Uh, we went from, there was a period a long time ago where people, oh, well, I don't want to be scared. So it's like, well, but you don't get scared. And then finally everybody went, no, you're going to get scared. Yeah. And, and you know that, and so as we've gotten these people in and gotten more creative and heard more things from the audiences, it's just gotten better and better and better. And then, and that thing we drop more makeup artists, we draw more actors, we draw more talent, and then that draws more audience, and you guys, you know, and it just, it, it continues to grow, but it really is collaborative with the people. It's not just, you know, us sitting up here. Yeah. All right, so, we'll move forward to our a guest who's been coming for years, obviously, you know, with the little ones, and now they're growing, and they're bigger and everything. Um, everybody loves the interaction of the characters. The roamers, the scare zone areas. Um, the only thing is, is some people get a little uh, rude and annoying. So my question is, uh, security-wise, because we don't want to lose the interactions of all the characters that are out there, because people love it for that. Um, so, is there any any updates or changes that you guys are? thinking of uh, security-wise for these scare actors, because some people do get a little too much. Yeah. Well, yeah. So I'll, I'll give you a little bit, a bit of background about myself. I, I've worked for, for Six Flags for about 20 years now um, in a variety of different roles before joining the entertainment team. But my first full-time position at Magic Mountain was actually in the security department. So coming from the security background and now working with the team um, and all the talent here 
and hearing their feedback again, and working off of feedback and, and doing that. We've expanded our, uh, our escort system for our, for our team members. We've also expanded security coverage um, and you know, other um, forms of law enforcement coverage and things like that. So safety is always gonna be, in the theme park world, the number one priority. Um, having, you know, like I said, the security background, but also on the, other, on the flip side, having worked as a talent um, a few times here in some of our events and seeing it from that side as well, really helps us mold how we're protecting people, but it's 100% the first thing that we, we think about with our team. Yeah, and uh, let's call it, uh, definitely it's, it's part of obviously our training, it's a big thing. Um, obviously common sense is to be, as a performer, is to be at least arm's distance away from somebody. Um, but let's call it, you gotta know your distance if you're a, one of our walk-arounds. And that's why we do have a lot of the great retention with our walk-arounds, because they know what they're doing. They know their distancing. Unfortunately, yes, we are gonna have rude guests here and there, everybody has them. Um, and it's really up to the talent to just avoid that, get away from that, and obviously report it as quickly and efficiently as possible. So that guest, unfortunately, may not be um, able to stay for the remainder of the event. So yeah, we are constantly evolving and changing that, and it really does have to do with our also amazing walk-around talent, because they know what they're doing, um, and then you just got to keep your distance. That's the biggest thing. And having having done this for so many years, I got to just say, you guys. Obviously, this room is a, full of people that love Halloween. We all love Halloween. We don't. We don't. We understand that that Halloween brings some people that act like, you know, not not the grab. Not saying anything bad up here, but that, but there's some people that are not terribly nice about it. The one thing that I have seen over all my years, not just the thirty doing fright fest, but the other decades before that, is is that the crowds are not being, a, a lot of people are not willing to let people do that. So sometimes I've actually been out in the park, seen somebody, a jerky person, do something, and other crowds go, hey dude, knock it off, you know, they're, you know, they're working, or, and I think that's cool, because you guys end up being part of the defenders. Does that make sense? No. It's like it's no, like the sure. audience is no. I mean, I'm not saying you should do it. Yeah. <laughs> no. Again, I'm security. No, no, no. <laughs> you shouldn't do it. But I like the fact that the, that the 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 crowd is they want you want to be there and you protect them and we do appreciate that because you all have a little bit of an ownership with them as well because you've had so many connections with them. Um, we've seen it and we appreciate it. Um, definitely and thank you all for doing that um, because that means that you care and we're trying to put on a great event and a great product we just want people to come and have fun and enjoy themselves but yes you're going to have the really scared big guy um, that's trying to be tough and you know what and we just brush it off and our actors are professionals and they know what they're doing and what i will say too is that is the talent is the heart of fright fest without a doubt Team to make sure that they're having not only a safe work environment, but uh, uh, you know an encouraging and and just you know fun work environment as well. So us on the management team, we're out there every night, all night. I can show you my Apple Watch statistics on the, uh, the amount of laps I do around that part. Um, but yeah, so it's it's always good. Um, okay, uh, we've got one more thing that I wanted. Hey, wait. Wait. Margo, what are you doing? I'm in the middle of my presentation. Mother's working, give me a second. <laughs> First clip! Do you know? Second clip! What are you guys doing? Making its appearance in May's form at Fry Fest 2023 is the Con. So 
We, uh, yeah, I want to break through the Q&A first there, because we're going to be inundated with questions if we uh, drop some uh, this knowledge on you guys first. But we'll be at our booth after this to talk through some things if you all have any questions and stuff. But we're very excited to be partnering with Warner Brothers and bringing this amazing, amazing It's our 30th anniversary, right? It's her birthday. And all of you are our hardcore fans. And we appreciate and love all of you guys. So, for 2023, we are going to give you a gift. So, for 2023, ladies and gentlemen, in May's form, we are bringing you Song. Yeah. Once again, super excited to be partnering with Lionsgate on this project, and this is going to be one you won't want to miss. So we are we are entering our 30 years. We wanted to celebrate correctly. We are going big at Fright Fest 2023. Yeah. So as I mentioned, everybody, that's uh, that will be down at our booth after this. That that does wrap up all the surprises so far. So more nights than ever, more mazes than ever. Eight mazes this year at at, uh, at Six Flags Fright Fest. So come see us. We're excited to see you there. Uh, we're excited to talk to you after this. Mark mentioned earlier we're having a hiring event on August 5th. If you want to come join these these uh, these IPs, be part of this experience. We're still hiring for, for some positions in these things. And uh, and yeah, and that's it. Welcome to Fright Fest 2023.